There's many arguments about whether the cost of resourcing an added complexity when adding a CSS preprocessor outweighs its benefits. There's no doubt that maintaining CSS styles gets harder as a project gets bigger. It becomes difficult to structure styles, classes and rules are often duplicated and overwritten, files become large and start becoming difficult to maintain, and the effort to make small changes starts getting bigger and bigger. Recently, some native technologies have been released to the general public such as Shadow DOM and CSS variables that help in reducing this complexity, but bring their own set of challenges such as compatibility. CSS preprocessors give us an alternative solution. A preprocessor has its own syntax for us to write easier and cleaner styles. These styles then get compiled down into standard CSS. This gives us the ability to write and maintain code easily while still benefiting from performant CSS output. Although Stencil provides us with an opinionated set of configuration such as choosing not to use a CSS processor out of the box, disabling scope styling and not utilizing the shadow DOM, it gives us the option to easily change things around to suit our unique needs. In this video, we're going to learn what the shadow DOM is, how to use CSS variables and how to configure our Stencil project to use a preprocessor like SAS or LESS. One of the most important parts of web components is encapsulation, being able to keep the markup structure, style and logic separate from other components on the page so that different parts don't clash and the code can be kept nice and clean. The Shadow DOM API is a key part of this, providing a way to attach a hidden, separated DOM to a component. Let's quickly define some Shadow DOM terminology we may hear as we start using this API. The shadow host is the DOM node element that the shadow DOM is attached to. The shadow tree is the DOM tree inside the shadow DOM. The shadow root is the root node of the shadow tree. As of October 2019, the shadow DOM API is natively supported in Chrome, Firefox, Safari and Opera. For browsers that don't support shadow DOM, Stencil falls back to scoped CSS. We'll look at scoped CSS in a minute. Stencil doesn't use the Shadow DOM API out of the box. To enable it, all we need to do is set the shadow parameter in the component decorator. If you need a refresher on decorators and to see what other options you can enable with the component decorator, check out my previous linked video. In the previous video, we created a component that outputs the amount of time since a given timestamp. Let's update the component to use Shadow DOM. So what happens in browsers that don't currently support the Shadow DOM API? Stencil automatically detects and falls back to using an option called Scoped CSS. Scoped CSS automatically scopes the CSS styles to an element by appending each of the rule blocks with a data attribute at runtime. This ends up being far more performant than loading a large Shadow DOM polyfill. Although Stencil is traditionally used to compile encapsulated components and create design systems, it's still common to have styles that should be global across all components. One use case for global styles is CSS variables. CSS variables allow us to specify CSS properties that can be used across our apps, for example colors that we want to reuse in different components. Let's add a global style sheet to our project. We're going to create a folder called global in the source directory then add a file called variables.css. We'll define a color variable and then call that in our time since component. We'll then add that to the global styles option in our stencil config file.
The root selector in this example is a CSS pseudo class that defines the variable on the root element of the project, which is usually the HTML tag, so that the variable can be used across the app. Sometimes we want to use the power of a CSS preprocessor, like SAS, LESS, or STYLUS. We can do this with just a few configuration steps using plugins. Stencil uses Rollup to compile our web components into standardized JavaScript. Rollup allows us to add additional custom compilation steps, such as supporting SAS or LESS, or adding additional polyfills. We can add these modules using the plugins array in the stencil config file. Let's try this functionality out by adding the SAS preprocessor and converting our styles. The first thing we need to do is install stencil SAS plugin as a development dependency. Next, in the stencil config file, let's import the plugin and add it to the config's plugins property. Finally, let's convert all our styles to SAS. We need to learn to use all the tools at our disposal to become a web components expert. Now we understand component encapsulation and how to level up our styles, let's expand on our design system by fetching data from an API by utilizing lifecycle methods. We'll learn how to do this and more in the next video, so make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss it. See you in the next one.